Hi, I'm Thomas Rohde, Archbishop of Mobile. And, and today I'd just like to give a message to high school graduates as they prepare to bring their quite unusual year to a close and as they look forward to the future. Uh, first of all, a word to all the students who are graduating this year, whether grade school, high school, college. I know that you're going through a unique experience and in missing out on a number of very happy occasions because you're not able to have a, n a normal graduation and all the other festivities that usually surround it. But please know we are proud of you and your accomplishment. I join your families and your loved ones, your friends in congratulating you on what you have achieved. But a special word to the graduates in the high schools. I, some time ago, I was speaking with a group of recent college graduates, and I asked them, now that you're out of college, looking back, what is it that you wish you had been told when you started college? And we got into a great conversation, and they came up with five things, and I'd just like to offer them to you for whatever they're worth. And the first word of advice that these recent college graduates said they wish they had heard when they went off to college was this. Just show up. Just show up. And I know what they were meaning. You know, when I can remember when I first started college, I, I felt I had died and gone to heaven. You know, I would have a class, let's say, at 9 o'clock, and then the next class wouldn't be until 1 o'clock. You know, in high school, it was bell would ring class, bell would ring class, bell would ring class, etc. But all of a sudden, I would have like a three-hour break between classes. I said, oh, this is nice. I can get used to this. But the temptation was, I don't know if I want to hang around for three hours for the next class. It's a nice day. I'd like to go be with my friends, or let's go throw a Frisbee, or let me go take a nap. I was up late last night. And the temptation is just to skip that one o'clock class, not to hang around. But that's when things start going wrong, when we don't show up for class. It's amazing how things work out for the best if we just show up, sit in the desk, try to pay attention, and take a few notes. Just show up. The second uh, word of advice that these recent college graduates gave was, was this. Uh, choose your friends wisely. And it's true. Our, our, our friends influence us. Things around us influence us. You know, I, we would like to say, oh, no, I am my own man. I make my own decisions. I am my own woman. I make my own decisions. The truth is we are influenced by what goes on around us. You know, in the recent uh, Super Bowl last February, uh, advertisers spent millions of dollars for a 30-second commercial. And they weren't losing money. They know if I have 30 seconds of your attention, I can influence you to buy my product. And that's why we live in like a soup of advertising. Studies have indicated that depending on how one defines an advertisement, we see hundreds every day, if not one or 2,000. Hey, just think, how many how many billboards do we see as we drive down the street? How many signs on buildings? How many advertisements on the side of buses? When we turn on a computer, the pop-ups, turn on television, the commercials, turn on radio, the advertisements, it goes on and on. Advertisers know what they're doing. They know they can influence us. And even more so, our friends influence us. I, I enjoy telling this story. It's a true story. Years ago, I, I brought a group of teenagers on a summer trip. And one day, we were waiting for our bus to come pick us up, and there was a low cement wall there, and I would say about two dozen teenagers uh, just sat on the wall waiting for the bus. I took a picture of them, and a few days later when we got home, I had the picture blown up real large, 
And a few days after that, we're all together again, and I showed them the picture. And I said, what do you notice about this picture? And they said, well, that's us on our summer trip. We were waiting for our bus. I said, yes, but what do you notice? And they said, well, we were waiting for our bus. And I said, but yeah, but what do you notice? And one of the teenagers got it. He said, wow, we're all dressed exactly the same. I said, yeah, look at that. Every one of you, guys and gals, have on shorts. None of you wore jeans that day. I said, every one of you has on a t-shirt. None of you wore a shirt with a collar that day. I said, notice every one of you has on the same brand of tennis shoe. I said, how did that happen? You know, we, we didn't have a meeting to discuss how to dress that day. You all didn't contact each other and say, let's dress this way. It just happened that every one of you got out of bed that morning and dressed exactly the same. And we had a reflection, which I, I very much enjoyed among us, a discussion of how peer pressure can influence us without us even being being aware of it. We're influenced by our friends. So choose your friends wisely. They influence us. And Jesus in the Bible says, you know, if a blind man follows a blind man, they're both going to end in a ditch. And if we're following people who don't know right from wrong, good from bad, what's lasting from what's temporary, we may be heading in a bad direction. So choose your friends wisely, and you be a good friend to others. So just show up, choose your friends wisely. Number three that they gave me was this, don't be stupid. Now that's different from being ignorant. Ignorant means I don't know what I should do. Stupid means I know what I should do and I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. And, I, and I put with that saying another old saying that goes like this, God will always forgive. People will sometimes forgive, nature will never forgive. And I've seen so many tragic stories firsthand that show this. I'll give two, two examples. Number one, friends have a friend who takes drugs. The friend takes drugs, the friend overdoses, the friend dies. God will forgive. And maybe the family of that dead young person will forgive. But nature will never forgive that young person stays dead. Or a second example, someone drinks too much, gets drunk, gets behind the wheel of a car, drives down the street, hits someone, paralyzes them. God will forgive. And maybe that paralyzed person will forgive. But nature will never forgive. That paralyzed person stays in a wheelchair for the rest of their life. Don't be stupid. Jesus says, I've come to bring you life and bring it abundantly. College can be such a wonderful time. It's just for us not to mess it up. So just show up, choose your friends wisely, don't be stupid. Number four that these young college graduates gave me was this. Do something that scares you. And I, by that I don't mean something that's illegal or overly dangerous. Let's go back to don't be stupid. But something that we've never tried before that will stretch us, help us discover new talents that we haven't discovered yet. So in college, do something that will stretch you. You know, maybe it's joining an organization that you'll have to get up and speak in public and you say, oh no, I don't like to speak in public, that scares me. Do it. Take a, a, an elective on a course you never thought of before. Sign up for an intramural team in a sport you've never played before. You know, they, you've never cooked, take a cooking lesson. You never danced, take a dancing class. Whatever it may be, do something that scares you. You know, in high school, you have had a, an image among your classmates. You have had your own self-image. In college, you can redefine yourself. So be willing to do something that scares you and find out the talents that you've never just thought of that you had. So just show up, choose your friends wisely, don't be stupid, do something that scares you. And number five, the last one they gave was walk into the Catholic Student Center. Or if you're not Catholic, walk into the Student Center for your denomination. And they said, do it as soon as possible. The longer it takes to walk in, the less likely you will be to ever walk in. 
They said stay in contact with God, stay in contact with God's family, the church. And they said, talk about making good friends. This is a great place to be with people who share your values and your belief. So those were the five points, the five words of advice that those young people gave me. Just show up, choose your friends wisely, don't be stupid, do something that scares you, and walk into the Catholic Student Center. And I offer them to you. You are graduates in whom we're so proud. I offer these five words of advice for whatever they're worth, and may God bless you.